So I'd like to look at adding fractions and subtracting fractions with different denominators. But to remind ourselves of some of the basics, um, looking at it when we've got the same denominator or the same bottom, we can just add straight across. So here I notice I've got 1 eighth and 5 eighths. Same bottom, so and I'm going to have 8 on the bottom. And I've got 1 eighth and 5 eighths that I need to put together, so that's a total of 6 eighths. And the reason that works is because these pieces are actually the same size, so 1 eighth and 5 eighths, they're all the exact type of portion, they're an eighth, and so we can kind of group them together like similar things. So in this case, we'd add them all up, and we'd have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 of the eighths. But again, the important piece there that they're the same type of object, they're an eighth. So where it gets tricky for us is when we've got different denominators, where the bottoms are actually different. In this example, 1 over 4, so 1 fourth plus 3 eighths. So here we want to add two fractions, and I'm noticing that the denominators are not the same. So here I've actually got to pause and think about doing something slightly different, which is how to make the bottoms the same. So 1 fourth would be just that 1 fourth piece, and 3 eighths would be 3 of those eighths, and part of our problem is that a fourth is not the same size as an eighth. So you can think to yourself, well how could I turn a fourth into an into a certain amount of eighths? And one thing that you can do here is, what if we split the circle up one more time and cut it up into eighths? So we know that one fourth is actually equal to how many eighths? It's equal to two eighths. If I cut a quarter in half, I get two eighths. So if I think of a quarter being equal to two eighths, then I could think about having eighths plus eighths to add up. So one quarter could be written as two eighths plus three eighths, and now I know I can have a total of five eighths, so I've made the bottoms the same. And what I've done there is actually thought about timesing the bottom by two and timesing the top by two as well. Two times four gets me eight, and two times one gets me two. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm finding an equivalent fraction for the one quarter that is actually using eighths. And in a sense, I've had to cut it in half, so I've had to now double the pieces that I used to have. Where I had one piece before, I now have two. So once you get them into the same type of object, in this case they're both eighths, you can just add again across the top and keep the bottom the same. If we look at another example, here I'm looking at trying to add two-thirds and one-sixth. Again, the bottoms aren't the same. I notice that third and sixth are different sizes. But I could think again about how can I turn a third into a sixth. Well, what happens if I cut this circle up one more time all the way around, so it's actually cut up into sixths instead of thirds? How many sixths are there? One, two, three, four sixths. So if I have to cut them up, I've doubled the number of pieces. So up here, what I need to do is double everything again. So I end up with 2 times 2, it gives me 4. And 2 times 3 gives me 6, plus 1 sixth. Now if I add up my sixth, I had 4 here and 1 here, so I get a total of 5 sixths. And another way to look at that, again, is that I'm trying to make the size of the pieces the same, I'm trying to make the bottom the same. And I can think about, is there any factors that both, or any numbers that both 3 and 6 can share? And if I know if I times 3 by 2, I can get to 6, and then I'd have the same thing on both, which is similar to what I did up here. I knew if I could times 4 by 2, I could get 8 on bottom, just like on the other one. So sometimes it's helpful to visualize cutting up the pieces and figuring out how many are there. But you don't always have to be drawing up your objects. You can work on it from another point of view. So let's take a look at a few more examples here. If you'd like at any point, it might be a good idea to pause and try these on your own, and then go ahead and play it and see if you've got the right answers. But let's walk through them for those that need more help. So I notice on this fraction, 3 fifths over 1 third, they're not the same size. And I can't just cut fives in half or cut threes in halves to get to similar size bits. They're kind of an odd thing here. So I want to think about a number that both 3 and 5 could times 2, that I could convert these two to make equivalent fractions of the same bottom. 
One hint for you to think about is try timesing the bottoms together. So here I could think of a hint. What's 5 times 3? That's 15, so I know I could times both 5 by something and 3 by something to get to 15. So I ask myself, what do I have to times 5 by to get to 15? And here I have to times by 3. That means I have to times the top by 3. And on the other side, what do I times 3 by to get to 15? Here I have to times by 5. So that means I also have to times the top by 5. So if I times these out, 3 times 3 is 9 over 15 plus 1 times 5 is 5 over 15. I can now add them up because I've got the similar bottoms. And again, that's because 3 fifths is the equivalent fraction of 9 fifteenths. They're the same thing, just cut up into different size pieces. So 9 plus 5 gets me 14 fifths. Going through the same process on this one, 2 thirds minus 1 fourth Okay, so threes, thirds, and fourths are hard to make the same size. I can't just double or half anything. So I'm going to think about what could I times each side by to get a similar bottom. And again, if you're not sure, try the hint. Times the two together, three times four gets me to twelve. So what times three gets me to twelve? And here I know that three times four gets me to twelve, so I have to times the top by four as well. That will get me eight over twelve. And on this side, what times 4 gets me to 12? And that's times 3 times 3. So I'm going to have minus 3 over 12. So if I have 8 twelfths and I take away 3 of them, I'm going to be left with 5 twelfths. Looking at another example, here with 7 and 2 on the bottom, and I know I can't really, again, think of an easy way to just change one of them to be the other, so I might have to change both in this case. So again, my hint here would be think about what 7 times 2, that gets me to 14. So what do I times 7 by to get to 14? I have to times by 2, so I'll times the top by 2. And what do I have to times 2 by to get to 14? I have to times by 7, and times by 7. So I'm going to get 4 over 14 plus 7 over 14, and that gets me a total of 11 fourteenths. Looking at this last example, I've got fifths and thirds, again hard things to combine, but I can go through that process again. I have 5 times 3 will be 15, so I know that if I times 5 by 3, I'll get 15, so I need to times the top as well. That again gives me 9 fifteenths, and here I've got 2 thirds, so times in by 5 to get 15, 3 times 5 gets me 15, so I times the top by 5 as well, and I get 10 over 15, and that gets me a total of 19 fifteenths. And just stopping for a minute, making sure you can't reduce anything, 14 over 15 can't go any further, 3 over 12 can't, sorry, 5 over 12 can't go any further, 11 over 14 cannot be simplified, and 19 over 15 that's alright as an improper fraction, but if we can remember, that's also can be written out as a proper fraction. I know that there's at least one 15 and 19, and that there's four left over after I take that away, so I could reduce that to one and four fifteenths. So on these problems, again, sometimes it's easy to think about cutting a piece up, but the process that I did here was the same. What can I times three by to get to six? Two times three, so I times 2 on top, and I get 6 and 6 on bottom. Or sometimes you can think about it without the picture, and just, as a hint, times the two together. So if you times them together, you can times the sides and end up with equivalent fractions again that have similar bottoms, and you can add them together.